The gardens at Carnton and the Carter House are a beautiful look into 19th century life, but the lovely flowers and the bounty of vegetables hide all the work it took to get them there. Gardens were an integral part of the landscape in Middle Tennessee throughout the 19th century. At Carnton, you see a structured garden with lined pathways and an arbor. Ornamental plantings are paired with vegetable beds. The layout of this more formal garden is based upon the findings of archaeology conducted in the early 1990s and uses a 19th century garden layout to recreate the garden to the time around 1848. The different quadrants of the garden show the beauty of specimen trees and heirloom variety plants. Many families in the 19th century would bring their chairs out of the house to sit under the shade of the trees to cool off and surround themselves with nature. The enslaved laborers at Carnton tended the garden for the McGavocks, but most likely had their own gardens near their dwellings. The garden adjacent to the slave house at Carnton was created to show guests how many in the enslaved community lived. This practical garden would provide food for cooking. Self-sufficiency was a way of life in 19th century Franklin and for the Carter family. The Carter farm had livestock, crops, and a cotton gin, but it also had a large garden and orchard. Recent land acquisition and the revelation of family documents from descendants has allowed a portion of the Carter family garden to be recreated. The plants in the garden are based upon written materials from 1870. All the plants and trees are heirloom varieties which were documented by the Carter family. Tended by members of the Carter family and enslaved laborers before the war, the garden was maintained on the property until the home was sold in the 1890s. Free men and women continued to work at Carnton and the Carter House alongside the families in the years after the war and likely tended the gardens at both properties together for many years. Volunteers from the Williamson County Master Gardeners Association dedicate their time and energy to care for all three gardens we enjoy today.